Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. With time, the way battles are operated or defense tactics implemented have changed, adapting to the current political, social, and technological contexts. This is why one of the objectives of the armed forces is to have the best developed devices. Achieving this requires development and research centers, which allow us to respond to military requirements. One of these is the Naval Surface Warfare Center, which is in charge of supplying the technical operations, people, technology, and engineering needed to equip and support the Navy. Its Carter Rock Division addresses the full range of applied maritime science and technology, from design and acquisition to implementation and follow-on engineering. This center comprises approximately 2,000 scientists, engineers, and support personnel working in more than 40 disciplines. Inside its facilities, the Carter Rock Division specializes in ship design and integration, as well as environmental systems, hull forms, and propulsors. Therefore, the center is equipped with cutting-edge technology within its dedicated laboratories, modeling and simulation facilities, offshore assets, and large-scale land-based engineering and testing sites. Here, engineers evaluate new concepts and features of ships and submarines, starting with the conceptual design using advanced CAD software. These tools are used to create initial designs and follow virtual tests. Such simulations allow engineers to get initial ideas about the behavior of these new designs. These include hydrodynamic performance, structural integrity, and CFD characteristics. Once the simulations and 3D models show reliable results, the engineers proceed to create the testing models, which are scaled-down versions of the real vessels, keeping with the same geometric features. Those scale models are sent to the David Taylor Model Basin for hydrodynamic tests. Thanks to its two 50-foot-long basins filled with over 30 million gallons of water, the division can study the behavior of the ships. Being towed by carriages to simulate the movement of the vessel, the tests can focus on resistance and how much thrust a ship needs to overcome the drag. Further studies are done in the Maneuvering and Seakeeping Basin, or MASK, where the handling capabilities of the vessel are tested. This facility features 216 computer-controlled paddles to create waves that simulate various sea state conditions. Using satellite and buoy data, the center has collected wave characteristics of the oceans around the world. Such data is then used as the input for the wave generator system that replicates the pattern and is followed up by the measuring process done by sensors within the scale models and around the basin. From the combined data from the David Taylor and Mask Basin measurements, the engineers have a complete view of the vessel's hydrodynamic characteristics. This is complemented by the early CFD analysis based on the theoretical models, which ensures ship performance. 
Beyond the performance and maneuverability of the vessels, the Carter Rock Division also focuses on the structural characteristics of ships and submarines that are affected by the force of waves or the enormous pressures of the depths. This last condition can be studied in the deep submergence pressure tank, where the structural integrity of submarines and other submersibles is validated. It consists of a 40 feet deep tank of 13 feet in diameter, making it the largest of its kind in the United States. Those features allow engineers to study how the load is distributed around the vessel, detecting any weak points or areas where the stress is higher than calculated. If a failure occurs inside the tank, high-speed cameras are used to study step-by-step -step the behavior of the submarine when it collapses, which aids in improving the structure design of future iterations. In addition to these facilities, the division has other laboratories to carry out other specific studies, such as the analysis of electromagnetic signatures on ships and submarines in the Magnetic Fields Lab. The laboratory's goal is to develop stealthier vessels, so it measures the signatures emitted by the ships or submersibles, either infrared radar, or acoustic signals. Similar to an anechoic chamber in ground tests, the magnetic field lab is built not to create any disturbance and to be as non-magnetic as possible. Some tests require larger spaces to be performed, which is why Carter Rock has facilities like the Acoustic Research Detachment located on Lake Pond Oreille. This 1,150-foot deep lake provides the ideal environment for acoustic testing without restrictions. Due to its extension, the center can support large-scale submarine models, like the Virginia-class model, and various research and technology development programs. Those experiments have resulted in the improvement of submarine propulsor design, sonar dome development, and target strength reduction. These experiments and development processes result in the approval of new submarine models, whose design would have the green light for production. This begins the initial steps of the construction of the submarines and their eventual commissioning to initiate their operation. Companies like Huntington Ingalls have been dedicated to those processes for over 100 years, being America's largest shipbuilder and a global all-domain defense provider. The company has three divisions, consisting of Newport News Shipbuilding, Ingalls Shipbuilding, and Mission Technologies, with the first two being responsible for manufacturing most of the military ships in the United States. The foundry inside Newport News Shipbuilding plays a vital role in constructing submarines like the Columbia class by producing its main metal components. It all starts with the drawings and designs provided by the product development area. Such designs provide the specifications on geometry and manufacturing processes for the part to be cast. The workers melt the raw material in the furnaces, which reaches temperatures beyond 2800 degrees Fahrenheit. 
This process requires controlling several parameters to obtain high quality steel, like temperature and carbon content. The molten metal is poured into the molds, which are let cool evenly to avoid residual stresses inside the part. Such a foundry can handle large-scale pouring operations, considering the completion of a 21,000-pound pour for the Columbia-class submarine program. The capabilities of this 200,000-square-feet foundry allow the production of approximately 1,000 castings yearly. We're now getting into the Columbia-class submarine, which is a brand-new submarine which brings its own challenges. And today we're pouring one of the largest pours for the Columbia class. The pour weight of the casting would be about 21,000 pounds. Most of the products produced in the foundry are metal sheets for the construction of the submarine hull. These are taken to the manufacturing center where a ceremony is held that begins the assembly process. This ceremony, called First Cut of Steel, involves a plasma bursting machine, cutting the first steel plate that will be used to build the submarine. Those cast metal pieces are then assembled into the main sections of the submarine, like the sail. Usually, this process requires welding the metal plates over a secondary structure to form its shape. Once the sections are finished, they are transported to the main assembly area, where the keel laying ceremony will take place, which begins the complete assembly process of the submarine. This tradition marks the birth of the vessel and highlights the commitment to the construction of the submarine. After the event, the sections are positioned and welded together, using hoists and cranes to get better precision, especially with sections like the sail that symbolize the completion of the external structure. With the end of the manufacturing and assembly processes comes the launching procedure where the shipbuilder transfers the submarine from the construction facility to the floating dry dock. Here, it's moved by tugboats to a submarine pier at the shipyard for final outfitting, testing, and crew certification. That testing process includes the first submerging and high-speed maneuvers, both submerged and on the surface. This allows the shipbuilders to ensure the submarine was built successfully and can perform in any conditions. Construction of these types of submarines depends on the work done in research and testing facilities. These state-of-the-art centers allow engineers to understand and develop various aspects of the vessel's design and performance. The constant efforts of those institutions will continue to advance modern naval operations. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.